Hi everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. Hope you're having a wonderful day. On this video tutorial for Facebook and YouTube, I'm going to show you how to make a couple different versions of these um, uh, vintage sheet music tassels. We're going to do some with wine corks. We're going to do some with champagne corks. Um, I'm going to show you them with vintage dictionary pages, um, and we're going to use lace and some other things. So they won't come out looking like this, but you'll, you'll have the skills after this to make something that looks just like this. So thank you guys for watching. Um, to all my Facebook friends, let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. To all my YouTube friends, um, be sure to hit the subscribe button and um, that way you won't miss any of my upcoming YouTube videos and you'll be able to go look at all the ones that I've already uploaded. Okay, so let's get started. So there's a couple different things that you can use. You can use sheet music for any instrument. It could be your child's tuba lessons, their violin lessons, their piano lessons, their marching band music. It could be, I've used xylophone music. Uh, I'm the, I've been just picking up little things of music. Some of them are more white, like this is a little bit more white. Some of them are a little bit more yellow. And I've been picking these up at Goodwill. It's something I look for every time I go there. And they're usually about two to three dollars. So when you're looking, if there's a bunch of them, pick the fattest book, okay? So that's one source for making these tassels. Another is any kind of book that you might have. And this is um, a vintage dictionary that my um, Mamu, is what her name was, she gave me a set of these and they've just been sitting and collecting dust. So I decided to enjoy them and cut them out of my book and use them in my crafts. Okay, so when you're working with either way, you need to get your um, pages out. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I have a tickle in my throat. Okay, I'm coming down. And um, if you tear it out, it's likely that you're going to tear part of it. So I usually use just one of these X-Acto knives and I just cut as close into the spine as I can. And usually it'll bring up a couple of pages. Okay, so I have two here. All right, same thing with the music. Um, but if it's a thin book, you can probably just pull the staple out of the middle. Okay, then the next thing you wanna do is trim it up so that only the pretty parts are gonna show for your tassels. Hey, and um, if you want, you can also use scrapbook paper. You can use... Um, <sighs> Any kind of colored paper, you could use craft paper. The possibilities are just endless. Okay, so people are just hopping on. Well, um, you can always go back and watch the beginning of it in replay. We're making tassels out of vintage sheet music and vintage dictionary pages. Okay, so once you get, um, and the principles are the same for this as they are with the um, sheet music because you're going to have all this space down here that doesn't look great on the tassels the space up here doesn't look great on it and then on either side okay so what i do and there's no specific size that you have to make your tassels i'm going to basically tell you guys absolutely everything i know <laughs> about making tassels Okay, so we're just going to use this sheet music, or this, uh, diction these dictionary pages that I have. And like I just said, I'm going to first cut off the bottom margin. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to cut off the top margin. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Okay, and then I'm going to cut off both sides. Sort of straight. Let's do the inside part first. See how I left a little space. Um, 
but you want all of your little tassel pieces to have something on them, even if they're way inside of the tassel. Okay, then the next thing you're gonna do, this is one of those crafts, you guys, where you can get multiple sets of your tassel papers all at once. Um, because sheet music and, and paper from a vintage dictionary, it's not very thick. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this in half, just so I know where the half is of this. And then I'm basically just going to cut it in half. All right. With the sheet music, I do want to tell you though, you need to look at it to make sure that you have it right side up. Okay. So just look and see if there's words on there and make sure there that you're cutting it with the right side up. Okay. So I've just made the stack of vintage um, dictionary pages. And then you're gonna just basically hold on to it and start cutting and you're gonna go up about this far. You can make your little cuts thin or fat. It's just completely personal preference. I, um, I like them either way. No, I'm not left-handed. Did I not get my camera flipped? If I didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, so for my Facebook followers, if you haven't been over to my YouTube channel to check that out, um, I have, I am in process, but I have 148 videos there of different crafts from the last two, three years. So if there's something specific you're looking for, hop over to my YouTube channel. It's a little bit easier to find things over there. Okay, we're getting there. This is what it looks like. So it's not perfect, but I mean, it's good enough. All right. Then um, the next thing you're gonna do is your, your, I like to do these with either champagne corks or wine corks, but I have had people tell me that they've used other little wooden uh, dowels that they cut or just rolled the paper on itself. Um, but when you roll the paper on itself, you won't be able to attach one of the, these little eye hooks at the top. So uh, just both of these came from big packages of cork and wine corks that I picked up at um, a craft store. Uh, or maybe you love to enjoy wine, just save all your corks. Okay, so let's do the champagne one first. And... What you're gonna do is look in your pages and you wanna find the prettiest one to be the last piece. And when I say pretty, what I mean really is that it has something interesting on it. That's, ooh, this is pretty. That's not too high up because the, it may get, ooh, this is pretty. Okay, this is gonna be our end piece, our last piece. This was another one that I identified as pretty because it has that on it but we'll use this other thing i i could have used this one but the the um the printing on it is a little bit too high and it's probably going to get covered up okay the first thing you're going to do is heat up your glue gun and you guys you are definitely going to get glue on your fingers with this project for sure i can guarantee it so um, I would consider using a low temperature glue gun and I'm using my Sure Bonder Cool Shot, which is a low temperature glue gun that I think is even a little bit lower than a regular uh, low temperature gun. And it's super easy to work with. You know, you do have the strings everywhere that there's just no getting over that. Um, okay, and I'm going to get a piece of this all ready to get started. And what I'm gonna do is just put a strip of glue underneath the bump. Okay. Then you're gonna stick your first piece of paper on. So, so I'm gluing it right underneath the bump. And since that cork is not straight, you're gonna find that your sheet wants to kinda 
go down to the side and you can just scrunch it up as you're going along. I'll show you what I mean. I think you guys can see okay. All right, so now I'm just going to put um, some glue on my, uh, oops. This is what I mean by it starting to go down. So I'm just gonna scrunch it and pull it back up. And with these, um, with the champagne corks, um, I think I did, I did, I have some already done because I'm gonna show you that the fun part is the decorating part and there's tons of options. So stay with me to the end so we can get to the really fun part. So I think I put five pieces on each one. All right, and I'm gonna just put some more glue on this. Start adding another piece. This is such a fun project. Oh my gosh, you guys, at um, Christmas last year, I did every ornament on our Christmas tree, just for fun, and they were all black and white for the most part. So I made, where did I put these? I made, like, I don't know, 40 of these with different, I used burlap and then a ribbon over the top. They were all sheet music, but different kinds of sheet music. And um, they come together really quick, especially if you cut stacks. And they're, like, this is a good project to do while you're just watching TV or, you know, hanging out. Uh, it's not hard, you don't have to concentrate super hard. Okay, so I'm starting to scrunch it in because it's not straight. Then after I'm done, I'm just scrunching. So I'm seeing some comments from my Facebook friends that it's like 100 degrees where they are. Oh my word. It's probably that same temperature here in Atlanta, but I'm uh, in the house right now, so I haven't really even been outside yet. <laughs> I've had so many requests for this craft lately that I just decided, and I'm in love with a couple different laces, and I really wanted to try that. So I decided to do the whole thing all over again. Okay, now here's a piece that I didn't get cut. So, and I'm shaky. I'm just really shaky today. It doesn't mean anything. No worries. It probably means that I need to have lunch soon. Yeah, it's almost one o'clock. Okay, so I just cut that piece off so it's straight now. Not that it would really be visible, but, um, you know. Here's what we have with three on. I'm going to do, where's my good one? I'm gonna do this one as the top. So I'll do one more of these. And then we'll put the top on. And usually when I start the next roll of this, I tend to start it right over where the last piece was. You can roll either direction, right or left. I'll show you how you do this with the wine cork too. Although we won't do the whole thing because it's essentially the same process. And I want to get to the good stuff, which is the decorating part. I do have other um, tutorials here at, uh, on my DIY Dreaming Facebook page and also on my YouTube channel. So if you want to um, look at those, if you have questions or just leave me a question in the comments either place. Okay, so that's four and I'm gonna do one more and it's gonna be this one. Is that the one? Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure that I stop it where this is visible. You could do, honestly, you could do these much fatter if you want, but they don't look any cuter with 10 pieces of this on than they look with five, I don't think. I 
I, uh, I also wanted to mention that um, I've had several people say that they don't, they don't drink, and so they don't have access. Oops. Okay, well, there was the end of it. They don't have access. Can I fix this? To any, um, they don't have access to wine corks or champagne corks. And I'm just thinking that, um, that maybe you guys don't know that you can buy them at craft stores. They're more expensive for sure. And also you can um, sometimes ask a restaurant or a bar if they're not using them, if they would give them to you. And a lot of times they will because they just throw them away. Okay, here is our completed tassel and you can see the pretty part, although some of that will uh, be covered up. Okay, let's work now with some so you guys look how much I have and this just took absolutely no time it was probably I don't know 15 pages cut in half and then sliced up in stacks of I don't know 10 at a time or eight at a time maybe okay so let's use um, some of this sheet music that I prepared in advance and let me show you what you're gonna do with a cork it's basically the same thing. You're just going to um, put some hot glue, low temperature hot glue, on your cork towards the top. And with corks, I usually will start all the way up at the very top. See what I mean? Flush with the very top. Because there's not that great shape to show off or anything. So basically, it's the same process exactly. And you're just going to keep rolling until you feel like it's full enough, whatever number that is, maybe five sheets. Let me just finish this and then I'll set, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but let me just get this roll on and then we'll set it aside. I'm, I'm scrunching them in too. Okay. All right, now I have some that are ready. Hey, and before I show you that, oh my gosh, um, I had so much fun with tassels last year. And um, we have this uh, beautiful backyard that has all these pine trees and they dropped all their needles like in late fall or, or early winter. And so I picked them up and I made tassels out of pine needles. They were prettier um, last when I made them because they were more of a green color, but they're, they're dried out. And so that's kind of a fun idea. And all I did to make this was you can see the heads of them. I just wrapped twine around it and then made myself a little handle. Easy, easy, easy. So I wanted to give you that idea. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is decide how you wanna decorate them. And there's two options for the top. And I hope I'm not going too fast. I think that we're doing good here. Okay, so there's, um, there's two options for how you're going to put a hanger on your tassel. One is these little hooks that look like... Get one out of here like this. They just have a little screw on the bottom. They're, uh, they're not like, they're not cup hooks because those aren't going to keep your string on them. So it needs to be a completed circle, if that makes sense. All right. And all I did to put that in here is I just pushed it down and twisted it and it went right in easy. So that's one option. Another option is, I thought I cut some of this off. Maybe I did, but I don't know where it is. Okay, another option is just to, you can use uh, any kind of twine you want, yarn, fabric, lace, it could be whatever you want. The other option is just to take some twine and glue it to the sides of your, down here on the, on the paper. We'll do that with this one, okay? And then we're gonna wrap around it. So let me get this on here. Just 
gluing that on there. If you guys haven't discovered low temperature glue guns yet, um, you really should. This came from Hobby Lobby. Um, I don't, I'm not a spokesperson for them or anything, so I just wanted to let you know that this is a, it was like $7, um, and it's a mess, because I'm a messy crafter, but it's a great glue gun. Okay, so then I'm gonna take the other piece and glue it just on the other side. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Okay, there you have it with a zillion glue strings. <laughs> and I have glue all over my fingers too. Okay, so now we need to decide how we wanna, and I have one that's finished that I did with just a straight cork in it. Um, we'll probably do this one with a little twine also. And this is what I have out. I also got my vintage buttons out, so we're gonna use some of those. So let's just get this one attached right now. Some people when they're doing the corks um, like to start in the middle. So that's personal preference too. Oh my word, I have 406 Facebook friends on right now. Yay! How is everyone? I am having an amazing day. Thank you so much. Okay, and I'm just going to put the other side on. And there we go. We're going to cover that up. Okay, so what do we cover it up with? There's so many options. Um, this lace that I got at Hobby Lobby recently is awesome. I've used it on a ton of different things. And we're gonna try this with some vintage buttons on one of them. Okay, so I just wrapped it around the tummy of one of these champagne corks to see what size I needed and cut it. And this is what the ribbon looks like. That's one side of it. I think the other side is the same, basically. This ribbon at my Hobby Lobby was in the ribbons that are in the wedding section. It wasn't in the ribbons that are in the fabric section. Um, but check both places if you're going to Hobby Lobby to look for it. And it's just, um, it's thick, it's substantial. It was $5.99 and of course I used my 40% off coupon on it. So ugh, you can't beat that. Uh, another option, if you can't get there, is this is my favorite Walmart from, my favorite ribbon from Walmart. It's not ribbon, it's lace, I'm sorry. Love this stuff. Now, it's way too wide, so what I would do, let me just cut a piece to show you. Okay, so what I would do if I was using this is first of all get this other side somewhat straight. And then I would just fold it in half. And I'll show you this on, uh, we may actually even use this on one of them. So let me just get it folded in half. And this part here could be the top or the bottom. It's just up to you and I would just roll it around my champagne cork or wine cork. Um, it is a little wider though. So, I don't know. I like this better. You can also use any kind of ribbon or you can use little scraps of fabric, which I'll show you that in just a minute. But let's get this one on and then we'll find some buttons and we'll get this one going. I like to do the wine cork, the champagne corks, so that the top is showing. I just think that looks great. Um, it gives it 
you know what, you have more of an idea of what it is in there, and it makes it more interesting. So I'm just gluing under these fatter parts of the uh, lace. Oh my word, I did not cut it long enough. Shoot. Okay, well let's fix that. You know I'm not a perfectionist. No big deal. We'll just take a little piece and stick it in there. I apparently did not measure well. And I didn't measure well just cutting it. This is what I have. I always have some major, <laughs> some major fail when I'm doing crafts either, oh gosh, now that ribbon, that lace broke. When I'm doing something on either Facebook or YouTube, I have some major fail. Good thing I'm not crazy perfectionist. Okay, we're never going to know. We'll put a button over the top of that part. See where I fixed it? It's perfectly fine. Okay, so this is what I have going right now, and I would just use probably some of this. Um, this twine that I'm using is from Walmart, and I believe that it was in the jewelry section. It's waxed, so um, it's really nice. I like it a lot. Um, I'm trying to remember, how did I tie it? Okay, now I remember. I just put my twine on the other ones through the little hoop, and then I did a square knot. Cut off the excess. And that's how it would be hanging on whatever I wanted to hang it on. Okay? And um, let me, let me uh, show you guys some button ideas. Okay. So if you've been watching DIY Dreaming for very long, uh, you know that I am a total button lover. And my button stash was getting kind of low, and then my friend Martha sent me some. Um, but what I'm getting really low on is beautiful mother of pearl ones, and that's what I like the best. Anyways, we'll find something in here that will work for that. It's a pretty one. Ooh, this is a pretty one. I would kind of like to have them all match. Maybe we'll use these, because these are easy. And we'll do, I think we'll do three, okay? So let me show you what I've got. I just have three little mother of pearl buttons. These came off of a necklace that I was not wearing anymore, and I thought, ah, buttons. So I cut them off, and I've been crafting with them ever since. Okay, and I'm going to just put a blob of glue or, to cover up that spot that I messed up. And we'll stick our button on there. And I'm gonna put the holes, this, this button only has two, about that. I'm putting the holes going up and down instead of side to side. And then it reminds you less that it's a button. And it looks more like just a pretty. Okay, and now I need to find roughly where a third is around the way. And another third. Okay, so here is our, oh my word, look at all these glue strings on my fingers. Get some of that off. And I'll pull all the glue strings off of this when I'm done. But look how pretty that is. Now, um, your lace could be any color. And um, I'm just really liking this more natural look this year. 
God doesn't make mistakes, but we make happy accidents. Yes, I make happy accidents all the time, pretty much every day, lots of them. And they might not be happy at the moment, but they always turn out happy. happy. Okay, so that was that one. I have another one, the one that we just made that has this pretty design on it. And I wanted to show you that in addition to using lace, you can also use scraps of fabric. Let's see, did I cut this one long enough? No. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have that one right here. Wow, I was getting super sloppy. Um, I do think this would be really pretty because it's, um, it's kind of that natural color. Let me get it scooted down a little bit. You could add something over the top of it if you wanted, like some of these rusty red buttons or um, a piece of twine tied around the belly. So that's one option. And another option is a thicker piece of fabric, which let's see, did I cut this one long enough? You know what, I bet I cut this one for the, um, I did, I cut it for the one, nope, I cut it for this one. So you could do something like this. What do you guys think? You love the fabric look. Yeah, and I have a ton of fabric right now because a friend of mine um, who's an interior designer, she was getting rid of a bunch of books of samples that were out of date. And um, she asked if I wanted some and I said, yes. So be thinking about that. Um, a lot of times the stores will be will have those and they'll be getting rid of those too, seasonally or yearly. Um, or maybe you have a friend who might have some of those. Or maybe you have just a stash of fabric in your closet hiding somewhere. So let's finish these up. We'll put this on the, the wine cork. And then we'll put the blue on the other one. And then I think we'll be pretty good to go. What do you guys think? This is almost too easy, huh? If you are a scrapbooker, you could do this with some pretty scrapbook paper too. And if you don't have any of that, they have that super affordably uh, everywhere. Think about your your Tuesday morning, your um, Walmart, your Hobby Lobby, your local Joann's. Um, you can find pretty papers everywhere. I wonder if I have anything in here that will look good on this. I don't want to have to get the other basket down or the other two other of those down but look isn't that cute and so it could be tailored to whatever your um, colors are in your house whatever your decor style is all right and let's finish this one off here Pull it as tight as I can around the very top and then we'll cut the excess off. This is such a fun project, but honestly, I feel like it should have been harder. <laughs> it should be a harder craft for me to spend this much time doing it, but it really isn't. It's so easy. Okay, and I have a little excess right here, and I'm just gonna snip that and then glue it down flush. Yeah, perfect. 
So be thinking about, these are great uh, present toppers. They look great hanging on um, a cabinet on the poles. Um, they're great on the Christmas tree, really great on the Christmas tree. And so you could do, you know, holiday type fabric on it. You could do holiday colors. Um, what do you guys think about that? Easy, 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 easy. Oh, we didn't do any with the, I didn't finish any out with the sheet music, darn. Oh, well, um, you guys get the gist of it. So I hope you liked this project. I'm sorry I didn't get to say hello to everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't already liked and followed DIY Dreaming on Facebook, do that. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, you should do that too. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I will, um, I'm going to take pictures of these tassels and the ones that I did before and these pine needle ones. And I'll share those on DIY Dreaming Facebook page. So if you want to see them close up, be sure to look there. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and um, I will see you again very soon.